Hello everyone, my topic for today is keratoplasty. Today I will be talking about a keratoplasty in a different manner. I will be delivering the lecture in form of questions and answers. So my questions will be who, what, why, when, how, where and where not. Okay, so I will answer all these questions. So my first question is who. So the first successful keratoplasty was performed by Zerm in 1906. Okay. And the keratoplasty which she performed in that, the graft remained clear for approximately 18 months. Okay. So the first successful keratoplasty was performed by Zerm. This is the question. Okay. Now coming to the next question. What? Okay. So what is this keratoplasty? So keratoplasty is a transplantation procedure. Okay. So it's a transplant procedure in which the healthy cornea is transplanted or maybe replaced by a diseased cornea okay so this healthy cornea is obtained from the donor and this diseased cornea is of the host okay so this donor in most of the cases is a cadaver okay so it's a person who's already died or it can sometimes be the host himself okay so when the host is himself the donor that time it is called rotational auto keratoplasty okay and the graft is an autograft okay so it's an autograft and the procedure is called rotational autokeratoplasty. So what happens in this rotational autokeratoplasty is, suppose if we have a cornea, okay, this is the pupil and the opacity or the pathology is present in the visual axis. So what is done is that this button is actually incised and it is rotated and sutured such that now the diseased cornea will actually be in the periphery. However, the visual axis will become clear. So, this is what is done in rotational keratoplasty as in it is the same cornea of the host but the visual axis is becoming clear without any, uh, without involvement of any donor uh, cornea from a cadaver. Okay, so this is rotational keratoplasty. So, next question is why? Okay, so why this keratoplasty procedure can be taken up and why it does it become successful? Okay, so as we know that cornea is an immunoprivileged organ. Okay, it's an immunoprivileged organ because of several factors. The first factor of why cornea is immunoprivileged is because there is avascularity. Okay, so my cornea is avascular. The next factor is absence of lymphatics. Okay. The third factor is that there is a relative deficiency of mature antigen presenting cells. Okay. And fourth factor is the presence of immune modulatory factors. Modulatory factors in the aqueous. Okay. So because of these reasons, the immune response which is mounted when a donor cornea is transplanted is very very less. Okay. So because of this, HLA typing, HLA typing is not compulsory. Okay. Is not compulsory in corneal transplantation. Okay. So that is why keratoplasty can be successfully performed in a lot of patients without very high risks of rejection. Okay. So my next question is where? So, sorry, my next question is when? So, when is the cornea safe to be removed from the cadaver for transplantation procedure? Okay. So it is said that it should be done preferably within 6 hours of death. Okay. So it should be done preferably 6 hours of death. Okay. And it can also be extended till 12 hours of death if the climate is cold. Okay. So six, within 6 to 12 hours this cornea should be extracted. Okay. From the cadaver to transplant it into a patient. Okay. 
Now, after you've taken out the cornea, so what do you do? How do you store this cornea? So, storage of the cornea. So, how is it stored? So, first is short term, okay? So, how can you do short term preservation of the cornea? There are two ways in which you can do it. You can either place the cornea in a moist chamber, okay? Not basically cornea, the entire globe is preserved actually. The moist, in moist chamber, it is kept for it is kept at 4 degrees centigrade. Another thing important, it is Mac carry Kaufman medium. Okay. Medium. Okay. So your popularly known as your NK medium. In this, in the moist chamber, the cornea will stay viable up to 24 hours. Okay. Without any destruction with a good endothelial count. However, in this Mac Carey Kaufman medium, it can stay from 48 to 72 hours. Okay. So, beyond these 72 hours, cornea cannot be stored in these short term methods. Okay. So, next you have intermediate storage. Okay. So, intermediate, how do we store this cornea? So, in intermediate, you have certain media which can be used. Okay. And these media are the main constituent of these the, uh, these media is chondroitin sulfate. Okay, so these chondroitin sulfate media are K-sol or Dexol or Optisol. Okay, so these are the media and they are rich in, as I told you, chondroitin sulfate. Okay. And the cornea in these cases can be viable up to 7 to 10 days. Okay. 7 to 10 days the cornea will be viable after which it can be used for a transplantation surgery. Okay. So after intermediate we have long term storage. Okay. So in long term storage how is it stored? In long term storage it can stay up to 30 days. Okay, and it is preserved by means of organ culture. Okay, so organ culture is done and the cornea is preserved. Okay, in long term. Now, after this is very long term storage. Okay, so very long, it can be stored up to 1 year. Okay, up to 1 year. And this is done by method of cryopreservation. Okay. Cryopreservation. So these are the various methods of storing cornea. So after the cornea is taken out from a cadaver, it is actually stored in these storage media. And later as requirement, as per the requirement, these corneal buttons can be taken. So the important point to note here is that in all these storage media, the corneal button is stored. However, in cases of short term storage in a moist chamber at 4 degrees centigrade, the entire eyeball has to be preserved. Okay. So, these are the various ways of storing cornea. Okay. Corneal button rather. Now, another question is, how is it done? Okay. So, how is it done? So, there are mainly two types of keratoplasty okay so the first type is a full thickness or a penetrating keratoplasty okay a penetrating keratoplasty in this procedure what basically is done is that the cornea from the donor the cadaveric donor the size of this should be 7.5 to 8 millimeters ideally but it keeps changing depending upon the indication of the corneal transplant okay so preferably in most of the cases it is 7.5 to 8 millimeters so this cornea from the donor is taken and the in the host the bed is created so what happens from the host the diseased cornea is actually removed okay the diseased cornea is removed and this donor cornea is actually sutured on the bed of the host by means of continuous or interrupted sutures okay so if you're using uh, interrupted sutures there are 16 sutures which are usually placed four sutures are called cardinal sutures by making a, a trapezoid and 16 sutures are placed in between for a interrupted 
corneal suturing in case of keratoplasty. And what is the suture which is used? The suture which is used is a 10 0 nylon suture. Okay, so 10 0 nylon is used. Okay, so this that, this is how we do a full thickness of penetrating keratoplasty. Now sometimes this full thickness keratoplasty is not done, and what is done is called a partial thickness or a lamellar keratoplasty. Okay, so what is this lamellar keratoplasty? So in this lamellar keratoplasty, what is done is that a partial thickness cornea is taken and it is transplanted. So this lamella can either be anterior or sometimes it can be posterior depending upon what is the indication of the surgery. So what happens in anterior is that suppose this is my cornea okay this is my cornea and a portion of this is actually transplanted. So this portion will have a uh, stroma, Bowman's membrane and epithelium. Okay. So this is what is present in this anterior lamella. Okay. So this anterior can be a conventional type. Okay. It can be a conventional type when the stroma is removed up to the thickness of the pathology. Then it will be a conventional type. And sometimes it is actually a deeper procedure and that is called DALC or the deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty. So what is the difference between these two is that here in these cases the stroma is removed up to the up till it reaches the desmond membrane. So desmond membrane is preserved and the entire stroma is removed. So that is why it's called a deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty. So what is the advantage of doing this deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty is that so when this stroma, when the stroma up to some extent is removed, there is actually a wavy border which will be created between the host and the donor cornea. However, if you remove the entire stroma up to desmond membrane, up to the desmond membrane, you will actually get a smooth interface between the host and the donor. And that is why the visual outcome will be better in case of deep anterior lamellar keratoplasty. The advantage of doing a lamellar keratoplasty will be that when you compare it with the penetrating keratoplasty, it will be that first of all, you are not uh, entirely removing the corneal button. So it will not be an open globe surgery. So when it's not an open globe surgery, there are various complications of an open, an open globe surgery which can be avoided. For example, there will be uh, less chances of retinal detachment, there will be less chances of formation of a cataract, there will be less chances of forming a cystoid macular edema. So these are the complications which can be reduced. Other things is that there will be a faster recovery. Okay, so the patients will be able to see really fast. There will be less, less suture related complications because in case of a lamellar keratoplasty, you are doing a lot of, you are putting a lot of sutures. Okay, so now the suture related complications, the astigmatism which you have caused to the surface will be less. Okay, so these are a few advantages of doing a lamellar keratoplasty. But the problem is that this is a time taking procedure and this is technically more demanding. That is it will need more expertise of the surgeon. Okay, so uh, lamellar keratoplasty. Now I will tell you what is posterior lamellar keratoplasty. So sometimes what happens is that you are actually taking out the endothelium and you are transplanting only the endothelium. When the endothelium is primarily diseased, as in cases of Fuchs endothelial dystrophy, okay, Fuchs endothelial dystrophy is one of the indications or sometimes in cases of pseudo-faking bullous keratopathy, wherein the endothelium is primarily at fault and the endothelium itself is transplanted. So what will be the advantage of this is that since you are not putting any sutures in this posterior keratoplasty, it will be astigmatically very neutral, okay? Uh, like the, uh, the astigmatism will not be changed because the surface sutures are not being applied. And another thing is that it will have a very fast recovery. So the patient will be able to see really fast after performing this posterior keratoplasty. But again, this is a technically challenging procedure and it takes a long time to master, okay? So, this is how you do different types of keratoplasty, okay? Now, coming to another question. So, where? Where do you do these kind of keratoplasty? 
okay so there are mainly three types of indications where this keratoplasty should be done okay the first indication is an optical indication where you need a clear visual axis for the patient to be able to see so the first indication is optical okay in optical indications you will have some cases like keratoconus okay so you'll have keratoconus you will have dystrophies of the cornea okay you will have scarring of the cornea okay so these are a few indications of an optical keratoplasty another indication which you will encounter will be a tectonic indication tectonic means you want to preserve the integrity of the globe you want to give the globe strength so in cases of perforations in cases of thinning of corneas okay or sometimes in cases of fistulae of cornea this tectonic keratoplasty is useful now last indication of this keratoplasty will be therapeutic therapeutic wherein you want to remove the diseased cornea and you want to replace it with a fresh cornea so that is called a therapeutic keratoplasty and this therapeutic keratoplasty is done in case of ulcers okay or infectious infections of the cornea okay so that is when you will need a therapeutic grade cornea okay so these are the indications where you do keratoplasty however there are certain conditions wherein you can not use the cadaveric cornea so what are those conditions or what are the contraindications so my contraindications will be when the person has died because of an unknown pathology okay uh, sorry an, an unknown disease when you do not know the cause of death that is when you cannot transplant the cornea in cases of certain prion diseases if the patient had hiv if the patient died because of septicemia if the patient died because of some intraocular tumors or if the patient had leukemia so these are a few indications where you cannot do a keratoplasty where you cannot accept the donor cornea okay another mcq for you to remember is that when is the cornea donation fortnight okay so every year we celebrate the cornea donation fortnight in our country and that is from 25th august to 8th september every year Uh, and during this fortnight a lot of awareness programs by uh, for making people aware of corneal transplantation are actually undertaken and people are taught about how this corneal transplantation is done and what are its advantages so this is my lecture on keratoplasty and in my upcoming lecture i'll be talking about corneal ictasias okay thank you so